Hey guys, so I wanted to do a video kind of discussing um, my grades and kind of how the last few weeks of school were. I know I did bad for last semester and I believe the semester before last as well. And then I wanted to talk to you guys about mistakes I made this semester because I think it's important to acknowledge the things that you did that were mistakes and worked out because you got lucky and the things that you did that were mistakes that did not work out because you made a mistake and made a bad call. So this semester, or last semester I should say, I was enrolled in four classes. So I only enrolled in four because I'm applying to graduate school. I know I've kind of mentioned that here and there. And that's the reason why I haven't been uploading videos so often. Um, I actually just uh, finished University of Arizona graduate application today. Um, hoping to hear from them <laughs> and um, so I knew it was going to be a crazy semester and I always tell you how scheduling is very very important and if I hadn't scheduled the way that I did there is absolutely no way that I would have made it out of this class alive out of the semester alive I should say so um, I took three history classes and uh, outside science course the course that I took was geology so right off the bat when I realized how stressful graduate applications were already, I decided that I was going to get a B in this class, that I would prefer an A, but I figured A would take some effort, and I was willing to kind of put none into this class, because it got to the point where I was really just focusing completely on graduate stuff. I was barely doing homework. I wasn't really paying attention to anything else. I was a graduate zombie. It was great. So, um, and I was working on independent research, so that really took a lot of my time, and all of my thoughts went to that. Um, and then the other three history classes that I took, one was History of Women in Europe, which was an upper division core um, that meets requirements but is open to non-history majors. So I figured, oh, it's open to non-history majors. How how hard can it really be? Um, so I took that because I figured it'd be easy as well. And then I took the first part of the honors courses that we have. Um, you need to take two in order to graduate with honors. And then I took my last and arguably hardest um, core history writing class. So this one kind of is a survey of how history has changed through time and the writing of history and the perspectives of history. And we had to do presentations, readings, quizzes every every week, every time we met. And um, so that was really stressful just to keep up with the level and the amount of reading that she gave us. So um, I did get a B in the geology class. I did probably no work. Um, I really didn't care to. I didn't want to. The class was boring. The teacher was boring. It was terrible. It was one of those classes where it really, I think, killed a little part of my soul every time I went. I would much prefer to do history or to have been in another class that would have been more interesting, but that's the way the cards were dealt. And um, I picked that class because it was going to be easy, and it was, but it was very boring. So um, that's what I went ahead and did. And then um, for my history honors class, it actually wasn't very hard. I think the reason for that was because I'd read a lot of the sources before um, when I was in my junior college because I had an amazing history professor who had just graduated um, and so from Oxford, so she gave us a lot of great reading. So I'd read a lot of that stuff before, um, so that was great. So it wasn't too hard. And then my final project was kind of like a little branch, like a little baby from my main um, project that I was working on for six months already, almost a year. Um, so that wasn't too hard. It was just a lot of editing and the approach was different. Um, but class participation and doing responses and stuff like that, it was just busy work. So that class wasn't too hard. And then the History of Women in Europe wasn't a hard class. However, I did make one of the biggest academic mistakes that I've ever done. Um, I'm usually really diligent about looking at things and kind of knowing what's expected of me, reading prompts, stuff like that. But I'm going to tell you guys the story of how the mistake came about and kind of how everything worked out. So, again, the semester is super busy. I took this class because I thought it was going to be easy. So I've taken four other courses with this professor. She always makes her midterms and finals the same way. The format is the same. Every Everything about the class is always the same. She always has readings, discussions, quiz. 
uh, readings, discussions, midterm, readings, discussions, final. It's always the same thing. She gives you a study guide. You do it. You fill it out. I always tell people it's one of the easiest class because it's very simple format for the class. So her midterms and finals are always three parts. The first part is IDs. She selects 10. You do five. The second part, she puts two essays down. You do one. And then the last part is an essay that everyone has to write. So she always does this like this. The midterm was like this. So we get to the final, she gives us the final study guide. I go ahead, I fill out all the IDs, I look at the two essay questions, answer the one I think is um, the easiest one for me to answer. Then I look at the final one, I fill that out, outline it, blah, blah, blah. That, I was done with that. Um, I met in a study group, so it was kind of nice. I always encourage those. And then maybe I studied one other time before that. So I show up the day of the final with my blue book, I'm getting ready. Taking my test, it's one of my last ones, um, besides the geology one that I wasn't going to study for. And I was really excited, but very, very, very stressed because my Harvard and Princeton applications were due soon. And I didn't think I was ready yet. So um, so I go ahead, I fill out the final, I turn it in. Uh, great test. I always joke around with that professor, made some snide remark, I'm sure. And then I walked out and I met up with... Um, some of the people that were my group, um, in my study group, and they were like, hey, Ruth, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what happened? I thought you said we were only going to do one essay. And I was like, yeah, like, you only do one essay. And they were like, no. For the final, she had us do five IDs, two essays, and the final essay. So I had a moment of being completely freaked out and not knowing what to do. Should I go back in? Should I not go back in? Should I go in and see if she'll let me do that essay again? But wait, I don't even know what the essay question was. I didn't even look at it. Blah, blah, blah. All this stuff. And the truth was that I didn't even know what the question was because I hadn't read it. Because when I looked at it, I glanced at both of them, picked the one I thought was easiest. So I didn't study for this. I had no idea. And I went in and I was like, hey, professor, um, I forgot to do. I didn't look at it. Can I, can I, can I do that essay? And then she was like, oh, yeah, sure. Like, people have been forgetting to do the second one, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, I sat down and I could answer the question in an overview, but I couldn't give specific details because I hadn't studied for it. I couldn't remember some people's names and I was rough on the time periods. And I said, well, whatever. If I don't do the question, I'm going to get a B on the final, going to get a B in the class. I can't get a B in this class. It's ridiculous. So I sat down and I kind of I kind of outlined it to the best of my ability, kind of wrote it out. It was pretty rough. Um, try to give a good conclusion and introduction since the essay was going to be rough. And I turned it in and walked out of there. Um, I think I did mention to the professor that she was killing me and that if there was wet spots on the final, it was my tears. Um, she laughed, of course. I wasn't laughing. I was dying inside. Um, so... I, I did the test. I forgot about it because, as I've told you guys before, you can't really focus and stress on one thing. You know, your ink is on the paper. Whatever you knew, you put on there. Whatever you didn't know is not on there. There really isn't anything you can do about it. So you need to stop stressing out about that when you move on to the next task that you have at hand. I think that's important. Sometimes students struggle with, oh, I didn't do very well on this test, and then they're stressed and don't do well on the next test, which isn't something that you want. So I moved on to the next test, finished up my course, and I was done. So about a week later, she emails me that um, she just graded my test. And I thought, oh, dear, like this is not going to be pretty. And then I go on to read her email, and she said that um, she uses blue books because she thinks that that's fair because she folds them all back and doesn't get to see the student's name. And that doesn't influence what grade she gives the student, which I think is very fair and very important. Although if I wasn't going to get a good grade, I sh uh, hopefully my name does influence her because she knows me very well, but I understand how that's not fair. Um, and she said that I was the only student in her class to get a 99 and that I got the highest grade. Then she wasn't sure how I did it because I hadn't gotten any sleep and I'd been working very closely with her on my independent project. And I could not believe that I made it out of there with that grade alive. <laughs> so... I told you guys that long story in order to tell you guys that you should read all of the instructions on everything. And despite having a professor before, make sure that you really review over exactly what they want. I could have really just messed this class up and gotten a really bad grade for missing a whole question. 
on a test because I didn't read the instructions. Even when I took the final, I did not read the instructions. I just went through it and kind of did my own thing. So there is that. Of course, like I said, it worked out because I've taken four, like five other courses that cover Europe and European history. So my grasp on it is actually very good. And I was very happy about that. Um, but it could have gone terribly wrong. That's what I'm getting at here. Um, then for my other two classes, which is the honors class and my last core writing course, um, I just had big projects due. One was on Herodotus and his influence, and then the other one was the baby one from the large project that I'm doing, which was on Federico Garcia Lorca. I analyzed the Edema and did a microhistory on it. So I got two A's in that. Um, but again, I wanted to just talk to you guys about scheduling and how important that is and to read instructions because at the end of the day we are students and instructions are very important to us because that's how we get things done. So I hope your holidays were great. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. Again, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to go back and read through everything and kind of make some videos answering some more questions. So let me know if you guys have any and I will talk to you later. Bye.